Hello and welcome to this video series on learning how to use Streamlit to make web apps. So you can use Streamlit to build and share data web apps and uh, all in Python, all for free, no front-end experience required. So we are going to make around seven or eight projects in this series. But first, today's video is going to be about uh, what Streamlit is and how you can um, design a web page using Streamlit, how you can put buttons and um, input and other sort of stuff. So this is the web page for Streamlit and this is one of the projects that we are going to make uh, in, in these uh, tutorials. So uh, write your country name. I'm going to use Netherlands since I live in the Netherlands and choose a category for the news, let's say business. And if I press enter, I get the headline, uh, author, source, date, uh, link, a summary and an image. And this is all just like that. Cool. So uh, this is one of the projects we are going to make with less than 30 lines of code. This is awesome. Okay, now let's get started with Streamlit. All right, I'm using PyCharm as my Python um, IDE. And the first thing you need to do, open up your terminal and pip install streamlit, press enter. It's gonna take uh, maybe one or two minutes for you. I've already installed this, so it's all good. And now <coughs> uh, that I have installed this, I need to import it. So import streamlit as ST. This is just an alias, a name people give to Streamlit to use it, it's shorter. Now let's start by displaying text on the web page. So they all start with ST, that is for Streamlit. And for title, let's just use dot title. And uh, what is the title of your page going to be? Let's just say news uh, app, something like that. That is enough for printing this onto the web page. Now I need to save this. And then to run the whole thing, I need to write a stream lit run and then the name of our file, which is intro.py for me. So intro.py. And if I press enter, you can see that it gives me a local uh, URL. And well, because I already actually have opened this, so you can't see it here. Normally, you would see the U local URL. And since I have already opened this, this happens. A local host, uh, colon 8501. So news app, this is a title. And then you can see on the right, we have the menu option. On the menu option, you have several, well, other options. One is settings. So if you click on settings, you can see that you can expand the width, like wide mode. You see, it takes up all the width now instead of just being in the center. And you can change the theme to a light one like this or to a dark one. You can also customize it. Like you can have your own primary color, secondary background, and even the font. You can change all of these yourself. I'm okay with this already. Then you have also these options to deploy your app onto the cloud, for instance, and rerun, which we will get to later. Okay, so for now, this is the title. Now let's get back to the editor and minimize this one. You can also assign this to a variable like title. Maybe you want to use this variable later so you can do this. It doesn't change anything on the web on the web page itself. All right. Now, how about a header, which is another uh, kind of um, uh, tag that you can use. So st again dot header. And let's just call it, I don't know, header. Then we have subheader, so st dot subheader. Let's call it also subheader. And what else do we have? We have text. So for raw text, we use dot text. So this is going to be raw text. And then a caption, if you have an image or a table or a diagram or, or I don't know, a graph or something, you can have a caption by st dot caption. And you would see the color of the caption is different and then code if you want to have some snippet of codes there so you can put that here for example if I want to have a for loop I can say a for I in I don't know range uh, range 20 for instance uh, print 
I, something like that. And uh, you're gonna see all these on the web page in a minute. For now, we have another option of markdown, so st.markdown, as opposed to markup languages like HTML, for instance. So markdown, you can have your markdown tags. For instance, if you have an one hashtag, it means it's going to be something like an H1 tag in HTML, that is a big heading. So let's say heading one. And if I want to have it like italic, I can surround it with asterisks or stars. It makes it italic. And the last one is going to be st.write, which is just normal. This is normal writing. Now, if I save this, and if I go back to my browser, you see this appears. So Streamlit detects the changes that you've made to the source code, and then it offers to rerun the code, the script. So I rerun, and you can see all these happening here. So this was a header, a subheader, a raw text a caption with this color, and this code snippet, I can also copy this. Uh, you can see the uh, syntax highlighting as well, that's really cool. And the heading with the markdown, which we use to make it italic and also big, and this is just with st.write that happened here. We can also add some HTML tags here. For instance, instead of, um, I don't know, I can say, something like h3 like an html tag h3 and i have to close that off here h3 which is heading 3 since it's an html tag i should uh, allow streamlit to run it so i would say on save this unsafe underscore allow underscore html so should put it to true sometimes for security reasons uh, they do not allow these tags, but you can make it happen. Now, if I save this and if I go back to the browser and rerun, you should see now this is in H3 HTML tags here. Okay, so this is for displaying text. Now, let's get to other stuff, such as buttons, checkboxes, and others. Now, for buttons, it is simple. So, st.button, and what is the text on the button? Let's say click. And if I save this and if I go back and rerun, you see this button here and with this hover effect. So cool. But nothing happens if I click on it. So how can I make it work? So I can assign it to a variable. Let's just call it btn. And down here, I can say if btn, that is if btn is true, that is if btn has been clicked, do something like st. Uh, write something like, okay, I was clicked someone clicked me okay uh now if i go back and rerun nothing is here if i click you see i was clicked super cool now let's get some more now download button so imagine that you want to have something like a download button so that when people click on it they download something how can we make that happen so let's just say st dot download button and inside that we need to have several arguments you can see the suggestions here one is a label that is what should be the text on it so we can say label equals uh, download image something like that next one is mandatory it is data data so data is basically the, the file itself. What is the file that we're going to download? I have an image and let's just call it file for now. I will, I'm going to change it. You see there's something wrong here. So the data is going to be a file, but where is the file? We are going to specify that in a minute. Some other arguments uh, like file name, for instance, uh, what shall it be called? Like when someone wants to, to download it, the name of the file I want it to be image.png that should be the name of it and the last one is mime which stands for like the, f the format I think it's like an acronym for a multi-purpose internet mail extension or something like that and you should give it a format I want it to be in a PNG format okay now we have this but what what is what is the file itself so for that, we need to use the width notation. We say width, open. So we are going to open a file. Which file? 
it is called image.png. I already have this uh, image in my folder, the same folder. And we are going to set it to RB, read binary mode, because it's an image. So we're just going to read it. And we're going to open it as file. And down here, we're going to indent this so that this happens inside it. So what we're doing is that we are opening our image file. We're just referring to it as file. And then we are going to download that file, basically. So this is what we are going to do. And if I save this, and if I go back, rerun this, you see download image happens here. And people can download things. If I click on it, then a window would pop up. OK. Now let's go back to some more checkbox. Now to have a checkbox, simply sd.checkbox. And then the checkbox, what is it going to be? Like I agree, for example, with the terms and conditions, something like that. Now let's save this, go back, rerun. And look, I agree with terms and conditions. Check, uncheck. Maybe if, if I want to or something to happen when someone clicks on it, like some text would pop up here. So I can say that let's just refer to it as CH. And if CH, that is, if it's checked, someone clicks on it, then st.write, um, okay, thanks for agreeing, something like that. Now rerun this. Now if I check, you see, thanks for agreeing, uncheck, it goes away. Good. Now radio buttons just like we saw in our project. So uh, for radio buttons, we have st.radio, very simple. And here, let's have a label first, something like choose a category. And then what are the options? The options should be inside parentheses or tuples. So let's say business and uh, politics, politics, and last one, sports so if I save this I go back rerun and you see these I select the category and the way you can choose is of course just like the, this one you assign it to a variable and then you say if that whatever variable it is do something with it so okay let's do this anyways so let's just call it R and then if R, if someone clicks on that, what should happen? Let's just write st.write. You chose, you chose what? R, right? So R is going to be whatever they, you, they choose. So let's save it and go back, rerun. You chose sports, business, you chose business, politics, you chose politics. Cool. So that's for radio select box now so for select box it is st dot select box and here again just like this one we have something like choose a category but there is a difference that instead of these instead of these in a in parentheses or tuples we should have them in lists in a list now like this so if I go back and if I rerun this, you should see selected category one. You can choose only one now here. You can also write, for example, as an R and then something happens here or P politics happen or B business happens. But we can only choose one. If you want to choose multiple like business and politics, we have to choose another option which is multi select so st dot multi select and it's going to be exactly the same as this one it's not different but only we can choose several ones so re uh, rerun and here again now look what happens if i choose politics here also sports i don't know maybe also business i can remove this i can remove all of them here so this is the difference now. And next one, slider and select slider. OK, for slider, we have st.slider. 
and let's have a label first let's say choose a range for instance and what is the range we should give it a minimum and a maximum number from 0 to 100 now and if I rerun you see choose a range so if I go all over you see I can choose whatever range I want and I can also work with these numbers that is whatever the user chooses I can do something with it so I can put this into a variable like SL and here I can say that I don't know ST dot right you chose um, oops so this should be inside you chose you chose what SL now if I go back and rerun this you see you chose 55 this is 55 and if I go back 40 41 28 you see automatically it just changes so fast awesome how about select slider so instead of these numbers just like this maybe I want to have options here so for that I need to use a select slider so st dot select slider and here again I can say choose whatever and inside lists I can give it some options I can give it I don't know Jack for instance I don't know John uh, Mary Alex and the last one Rob and if I save this and go back and rerun this you see now if I click somewhere here it would jump to the next one like this one you see John Mary Alex and Rob so if I grab this like this it jumps like so okay that is select a slider and yes we are done with this part now let's get to the input part okay this is also interesting now if I want to grab users input the name of a city or whatever I can use text input simply st dot text input and your name here so this is like a label kind of thing that you use here if I go back and rerun you should see your name here and then someone can enter their name here I can do the same with all of these so I can say st dot text area for instance and your message here st dot number input your I don't know age here st dot uh, time input time here st dot date input date st dot color picker color uh, what else is there um, yeah file uploader so st dot file uploader your file okay now if I save these and go back and rerun you see your message text area your age number and you can also increase it like this time here you can choose times date you can have this beautiful calendar and color so you can also change your color here whatever it is you want to choose and your file so you can browse the files and draw or drag and drop files here as well that was very very easy now let's get to display media if you want to display images or uh, I don't know audio or video simply st dot image would do the trick and inside this you can put a, the um, the address of a of a uh, of an image so if I choose uh, I don't know something like uh, pixels.com and <clears throat> if I choose one image here like I don't know this one maybe copy link address and if I go back and paste it here let's save this and rerun this and you should see well maybe this one didn't work like that so copy image address actually yeah so copy image address let's do it here save this go back rerun 
and you see this is here so cool awesome the same happens with the media with other forms of media like st.audio if you have an audio <coughs> you can put your mp3 or whatever audio here then that will be played st.video will do the same for for videos now displaying data data frame table and metrics so let's let's say we have like a dictionary and that dictionary is going to be name a key value pair right so we have the key as name and then the value is going to be a list of names like jack uh, john and mary and then we need to have another key value pair this time it's going to be about age and the age is going to be uh, 25 uh, 55 and 30. so we have this dictionary and if i just simply say df it will be displayed just like that as a dictionary or a json file so if i rerun this you see this is what happens here so but i want to turn this into a data frame like a pandas data frame for instance so for that i need to say st dot data frame and then df that is this uh, json or dictionary turn this into a data frame and if i rerun you can see this is here cool and look at this so these are not ordered based on the age but if i click on age you see 25 30 and 55 that is ascending if i click again that will be descending 55 30 and 25 cool and also you can click on this like m j o j a and j a j o m a so based on alphabet now so this is uh, great by data frames we'll talk about data frames and also charts a lot later how about the tables so i can also have a very simple static table so just by saying see the table and then df let's make a table now if i rerun this you see this is a table name age these names and these ages the last part about this data is about metrics so for metrics something like um, a temperature for instance you have st dot metric and then inside we have several arguments the first one let's just call it temperature and then we have two more numbers one number can be i don't know the the temperature itself that is uh, for instance 24 uh, degrees celsius and since i've used actually single quotation now i should use double here and then another argument could be like the velocity or speed of i don't know the wind let's just say three i have no idea of four something like that and if i save this and if i go back to the browser and rerun this look at this temperature beautiful format temperature 24 degrees 4 in green and the arrow is upwards because it's a positive number so if i turn this into negative negative you would see this changes now into red if i rerun this look at this awesome so this is also something that you can do all right now let's talk about the layout now so imagine i have uh, three of these like for three cities let's say so one two and three so 20 i don't know five to 20 here and then let's say here is one here is uh, eight positive now if i rerun this you see they're in this order on top of each other but maybe i want them next to each other so i should create columns now so this is one row one column but i want to create three columns so that these all are in those columns how can i make columns here so for making columns this is what we do we say uh, call one for example you can name it whatever you want call two and call three they equal st dot columns and how many columns are there three right 
So 3 means that this would be 1, this would be 2, this would be 3. It would kind of equally distribute it now, the space. I want to put this one in column 1, this one in column 2, and this one in column 3. How can I do that? I can use it again with the width notation. I, I would say width, call 1, columns, and put this one under this. And again, do the same with call 2. So with call 2, this should happen. And the last one with call 3, this should happen. Now if I save this and go back and rerun, look at this beautiful thing here. See, so we have three columns now. So beautiful. But the columns are equally distributed. Let's say, let's go up there. Uh, like here, we have, for instance, I don't know, your age and time here. And let's say I want to have, uh, well, first, first of all, let's just put this, put these two in, in two columns next to each other so your name and your your message so let's go up there and uh, let's find them here so if I say call one call two equal st dot column and if we have two columns so the first one would be with call one I want to put the name inside the call one and with call two I want to put the text area there, right? Now, if I rerun this, you see they're next to each other, right? But this one is unnecessarily long. So maybe I want this name to occupy only one fourth of the space and the message body, this uh, area, occupy three fourths. How can I do that? So I can say, instead of two, I can use a list. I would say the column one should occupy, let's say, for instance, I don't know, one part, and column two should occupy three part. That is, if we divide this, the space, that, that width, into four pieces, so one part of it should be column one, and three part of it should be column two, which is the area. Now let's go back and let's see what happens. Look at this one. You see how cool, awesome, so easy, so beautiful. All right, now that we have done this one, let's get to Expander now. So what is Expander? Expander is something like a drop down. Some, if you click on it, something would just pop up or pop down. I don't know. Let's just see what it is. So for that, we need to use st.expander. And let's give it a name. I would say, uh, I don't know, click here, for example. Now, if I save this, and if I go back and rerun, you see something like this, click here, but it should, and you see this plus sign. So it is empty. If I open it, you see, it's empty. So how can I put things inside it? Just like this with width notation, I can also say width, with this one, that is, I should include things here now. With the expander, I want you to, I don't know, uh, maybe, yeah, all these actually. Why not? So let's grab all these and put them all here. Let's see what happens now. If I rerun, now let's click on this one. Look, awesome, right? So you can put whatever you want anyways here inside this expander. So everything that you did up there, even the image and whatever, they can put it right here. So if I get rid of this now and go up there to my image, that is this one, let's copy the image and grab it and put it inside the expander like this. Save this, go back, rerun. You see, now it is inside this expander, the image. Awesome. Okay, so that was for the expander. Now, how about a sidebar? So a sidebar is somewhere here. You click on something, it just opens up, and then you can see some information there. And you can use whatever you've used here inside a sidebar as well. So let me show you. To make a sidebar, you need, simply need to use the word sidebar there, 
and then whatever you've been doing so far like title for example let's say I don't know uh, this is sidebar and let's also have a button st dot button was something that you used to make a button right click but if I want it to be inside a sidebar I can just use sidebar here and then if I save this and go back and rerun this is a sidebar but where is my button uh, let's see the sidebar that button something is wrong here so let's just hmm yes oh okay because I already have another button with this name so maybe I should change this to I don't know uh, enter here for example if I click if I run this yes that was the reason so I've already had another button called that uh, asks for someone to click now we should change the name inside it otherwise there would be a conflict so you have to change them you see so whatever you've did you've done here you can do it here you just need to add the word sidebar in between those things and yeah of course you can close it you can open it like that as well you can put the image here you can put everything that we did here up here okay now let's get to the last part which is about um, spinners and progress bars so to show the progress or the skill that you have you can use st dot progress and if you use i don't know something like 70 it means it between 0 and 100 so if i save this and i go back and rerun you see this bar has filled up 70 percent so that is something like for example you can say python skills 70 or i don't know 40 or 30 something whatever this is a progress bar we also have a spinner that is it waits like something for loading for example it waits for some time and after that it just executes a code for example st.spinner uh, wait for I don't know, three seconds if I run this nothing is gonna happen because yeah you can't see it is so fast nothing is gonna happen there is no delay anyways nothing here so for that I can use time module I can say import time and then with I can use the width again notation and under that well, with st uh, spinner I can say time dot sleep uh, let's say three which means three seconds that it should sleep for three seconds and then do something so let's see what it means so if I go back and if I rerun you see wait for three seconds one two three and it goes away so this is what the spinner does and then after that you can do some other stuff for example you can st dot write uh, thanks so and this would happen whatever comes after a spinner would happen after this three second so if I rerun this you see one two and three and thanks this appears now so that is one thing now how about some messages like error messages warning messages you can also have these <coughs> uh, let's have them here <coughs> like st dot uh, success would um, I don't know would uh, kind of what is it would put out a message of success would, like in green and they will have different colors like info should be blue so st dot info like okay let's just call it info information for instance and then st dot warning what is it it's going to be some warning st dot error oops something wrong and st dot exception uh, exception so if I save and go back and rerun this you see these messages thanks information warning oops and some exception uh cannot extract oh yeah you should actually within the catch block uh, okay so never mind so this is actually what 
should happen with these things here. <coughs> yeah, and uh, well, let's fix this actually. So let's just create some error. For example, E equals, let's have some runtime error. And uh, let's say something wrong, something like that. And then the exception would be E. So if the exception is E, some something like a runtime error, then you should spit this out. Let's go back to our browser and let's rerun this. And you see, it dis displays the runtime error as something is wrong. So that's also for exception. And the last one is going to be balloons. So balloons is something, I don't know why they have done this anyways, but uh, and why this is good for, but it's just like for maybe, I don't know, uh, putting, an, putting an end to this video, maybe. And uh, let's see this, what I, how this happens. So st.balloons. And if I go back and rerun this, you should see I've wait for three seconds and balloons. Yay, nice. So that was a streamlit in 35 or 6 uh, minutes. Thank you so much for watching. And in later videos, I'm going to put all those projects that I talked about. See you later.